Hello. Um, <clears throat> today I'm going to continue with my uh, series of Predator videos by talking about Predator 2. Um, which, uh, the first Predator film, you know, I last time I'm, I think I might have messed up at one point and said it was, took place in uh, South uh, America. Well, it takes place in Central America. Um, though within the film, they don't exactly say where they are, so that kind of uh, uh, sort of probably confused me when talking about it. Um, but yeah, the first film was in uh, Central America, and the second is in Los Angeles, so it's like an urban jungle. And the film stars Danny Glover as Lieutenant, uh, Detective Lieutenant uh, Mike Harrigan, and um, uh, Gary Busey plays P Peter Keyes, who is, uh, says he's with the DEA, but, you know, as the film goes on, we know that isn't the case, and that he's part of something else that's quite bigger than the DEA, but... Uh, Yeah, um, I didn't talk about uh, Kevin Peter Hall, who was the Predator. Um, he's excellent in these films, these two films. Um, uh, the voice of the Predator in this was uh, uh, Hal Rail. Um, Rail. Uh, I've, I've, I've seen the name, but I've never really heard of any pronunciation, so I apologize if I got the name wrong, but in the first film it was uh, uh, Peter Weller, so, you know, Optimus Prime, uh, the voice of Optimus Prime, I should say. Um, so, but, yeah, P uh, Peter, or, or Kevin Peter Hall, uh, aside from the Predator films, he's also best known as Harry and Harry and the Hendersons. You know, and he's fantastic in these films. Um, um, <clears throat> sadly, he passed away um, in 1991. This film came out in 1990. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, the work he does in this is excellent. Um, the... Uh, you know, Danny Glover does a fine job in this film, as does Gary Busey, as Peter Keyes. Um, Bill Paxton's in it. Um, and there's this thing where uh, he, he's he's like the only person to ever be killed by a Terminator, uh, alien, and a Predator. Um, I know people will say he didn't get killed in Terminator, but apparently what happened, you know, he got shoved backwards and slammed against, like, the metal... Uh, like rail is on the on the, wherever he was, um, or like, like like almost like a door or whatever, and uh, but apparently that killed him. So, in Terminator, he does die. He die. Uh, he gets shoved back hard enough from the force and just dies. Um, obviously, in Aliens, he uh, gets killed, and in this film, he gets killed also, and hung upside down, just like a lot of uh, uh, people uh, that the Predator kills. And uh, in this film, we also see some new weapons, like a, like a disc of sorts uh, that the Predator throws that Harrigan gets by the end of the film. And, uh, of course, the shoulder uh, plasma cannon and the self-destruct which is there as well as um, a spear, which is really cool, and um, a net that is that can cut people's faces and um, or cut people. I should say just not just their faces, but you do see on someone's face and they get uh, hung up on the on a wall, pinned to it, and uh, with the, by the net and. Uh, the spear is also quite cool and there's also like a little harpoon type thing 
or spear sort of thing and it's very interesting uh but the, the, all the weapons and technology that the predator has in this film is really cool and interesting they're expanding upon the predator in this film we see the predator more often you know both you know uh invisible as well as not invisible um you know peter keys and his guys are trying to you know um find or get the predator and have it alive and freeze it that way they can take the technology that the predator has so they can then you know use it and for good for their own, like for the good of the people that research it and everything um but all the while this is going on there's like a, a gang war going on and the police are trying to stop it with the colombians and the jamaicans and there's drugs of course and there's like a part of the reason for like gang wars aside from like maybe the typical stuff of perhaps like turf and such it's just like a lot of drugs going on so this is going on and this also adds for the predator to go and like you know there's more people there's more places where they're like like a jungle and there's a lot more people around in these big cities and and this film isn't as good as the first film. Um, and I remember when I first saw the second film, it wasn't that long after the first. I kind of thought it was eh. It was uh, not as good. And I still think it isn't as good. But um, upon uh, re-watching it uh, over the years, and especially recently, I realized just how, you know, it, it may not be as good as the first film, but... It's not horrible. It isn't like some people say it's terrible and this and that, but there are some good moments. Um, maybe some of the acting here and there isn't the best, um, but the spirit of the Predator is still there, um, even without Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, you know, there's various stories as to why he didn't do this film. Uh, him doing Terminator 2 is the obvious reason, but uh, apparently a big reason was uh, it came down to money. Like, you know, he, there's some thousand dollar difference, which uh, I would gather it has to do like with millions. Like, you know, uh, like maybe like a certain half a million and or more of a full million of X amount of money. I don't know how much he was going to be offered really like they've anytime you try to look at uh, uh into this like the reasons aside from did terminator 2 uh apparently arnold um you know there's like a dispute with money he wanted a you know the, a bit more money which understandable the first film was a success so want to do a sequel to that you wanted to have a bit more money and so you know especially when filming in Los Angeles that's going to be even more expensive already so the budget likely will be more so obviously it would make sense that the star would want to have some more money but they weren't able to come to an agreement and so he wasn't in the film though they do explain by, by keys like how uh, he survived uh like this nuclear explosion when the predator killed itself because it was severely wounded in the end and uh, he was treated in the hospital for like radiation and such and um, at some point he just left he escaped the hospital and nobody has seen him or heard from him since um, so that's the explanation that we are given and Key's character um, is essentially supposed to be originally like a uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's part but since he wasn't going to be in it they rewrote it and so some of the stuff that he would have been doing of trying to hunt the predator down uh, those elements went to his character and of course you know there's the, he and Harrigan butt heads <laughs> you know because Harrigan is a detective there and he's trying to get all this stuff going on and straighten out an ending and as much as possible and 
here are these uh, guys who are like the feds, you know, the government coming in and just taking over and uh, not letting him like do anything really. Uh, and so that's frustrating for Harrigan and his uh, team, um, which is a conflict that we see in various films. In a way, I guess you could say it's a bit cliched, but it's a cliche that works and it does work here. Um, again, it isn't as good as the first film, but it being the kind of movie it is, it's still fine. Uh, again, the spirit of the first of the, like, what was in the first Predator is still there. Um, like Kevin Peter Hall is still excellent. All these films in here, like the 4K and such, look excellent. Um, um, of course, the, the Blu-rays that come with this have all the special features. Um, so if you ever do get this, just know that if you have just the 4K disc and you're not gonna be able to really get any special features outside of commentary. But again, this is a pretty good film and Watching the behind the scenes of these two films, quite good. And um, yeah, the look of the Predator is always, uh, uh, always interesting, always um, quite fascinating. Like, and the, in these two films, you always uh, have somebody saying, "Like, you are one ugly mother." <laughs> I'd say that, but you never know. Sometimes YouTube isn't too fond of uh, certain words said, so you gotta be careful. And if you do say it, it's like you gotta make sure when you say it and uh, uh, even how. Uh, but yeah, it's good film. I enjoy it um, for what it is. Again, not my favorite. I, uh, Predator is still my favorite of them all. Um, but yeah, going through these, um, it's really cool to see if my uh, impression of some of these sequels uh, change or not. And if they do, is it for the better or is it for the worse? Um, and here I think it's for the better. Um, I don't watch it as much as the first Terminator, but or Terminator Predator. Arnold a bit too much, but seeing more of the Predator and the weaponry that he ha basically has for an upgrade, it is pretty cool, and uh, it's it is nice to see the sort of effects that they're able to do, uh, optical and everything. Um, but you know, it's always fascinating to see how stuff like this works. I think. Um, I've always been fascinated with all that stuff, and so anytime I'm able to see behind the scenes of films after watching them, you know, generally it gives me a better uh, appreciation for the film because you know they, there's a lot that goes in them, and so they're, you know, you want, uh, <clears throat> you know, you want to not only enjoy the film but also with the behind the scenes stuff can make you appreciate what it took to make those movies even more and that's even better um, I think um, especially as the time <laughs> between the second and the third one you know there's a great deal of time and there's you know like 20 years <laughs> and uh, and in 20 years time they were able to have even better effects than they had when the first two were made and also it was from the practical stuff they have. They're able to make it even uh, just as good, if not better. And um, so far, going through these films, uh, one at a time, it's really cool. And to talk about them, um, something I've wanted to do for some time, but I really just haven't done before, or at least not as like, individual films. I know that I might have mention them briefly or overall as a general like, consensus of like what my thoughts of the franchise are 
but never gone one by one and say what I enjoy about them or all that but you know uh, I know the criticism is this film is a bit too much like the first film at times just in the urban setting and I get that um, but uh, who knows what if, if Arnold did take it did do this film money and all that aside and um, if he was able to hold off on doing Terminator 2 I wonder how you know if if Predator would be just as good as it is now or Predator 2 would be just as good as it is now or if it would be better um, I think a lot of people would say it would be better because Arnold would be in it but you know we don't know that's a question we'll never be able to know for sure uh, could have been just as good as it is now or maybe it would be better or maybe even worse uh, who knows um but that's really all my thoughts are uh, for the time being that I can think of um, without repeating myself. Performances overall were good. Some cheesy stuff going on there, so not always the best acting at times, but not horrendous. There are definitely some action and sci-fi films with worse acting, so it's not horrible in that regard. I mean, effects are quite good for the time. Uh, music is good also the music for these films are excellent um, so yeah I hope all of you are doing well a lot of you are having a great day a great weekend and we'll have a great week and I'll see you all next time bye